Welcome back to part 3 of this series where I show you guys how to bring your real life car or any car into Assetto Corsa. For this part we will be covering aero modifications. Okay so we're back here with our Toyota GT86 which is our test car for this series. Uh, last time we added some power mods and we also just did a couple random things in the introduction video but today we're going to do aero. So what we're going to do is basically add an APR GT250 wing to the back and then just a common splitter to the front to get a nice balanced aero setup. So we're going to start with the wing. Now we're going to go to unpack data. There's an aero tab right here. So we're going to open this up and see what's inside. What you can see is that there's a couple of different sections for the different wing profiles. So how the aero is set up in this game is that you get downforce and drag and whatever else from each different element that acts independently on the car. So wing zero is the body and that handles the main drag of your car, like from the front bumper and everything. Um, if you look down here, there's another wing called front, which basically just simulates all the aero effects of your front bumper. So including lift, drag, and whatever. Uh, wing 2 is the rear of your car, which is going to include, I guess, the top surface and the bottom surface, like your diffuser and such. Um, but what we're going to do is, since we're adding a GT250 wing, which is an individual element that sits above the roof line and acts completely individual from any of the other elements on the car, we're going to just copy and paste this real quick and call it wing 3. It's going to be a whole different element. So we're going to call it wing APR. Now the first thing we're going to do is set the position of this wing. This is going to be something that you just have to put in an X, Y, and Z coordinate, and then you can go into the game to see how it looks, make sure it's in the right spot. You just visually want to get it in the right spot, basically. So what I did here was I changed the Y value to make it a little bit higher. I think the Y value is the height, but we're going to double check this. We go into the game here, press F7 so you can drive around. Then what you're going to want to do is on the right side, open up the wings widget. So this shows you all the wings on your car visually, and it'll also show you the drag and lift and everything when you're driving. What we want to do right now is visually inspect where the wings are. So each of these green rectangles is a wing. If we look around, you can see there's the front bumper, the body, which is the middle one, there's the rear bumper, and then we have, you can tell this is the new wing that I just added because I changed the Y value to make it higher. This whole thing is the new APR wing. So actually, it's kind of in the right spot already. Um, it doesn't really matter how long it is. All that really matters is the center point of the wing because all the force is going to act about the center of this plane. So I'm going to leave it exactly the way it is. But if it wasn't in the right spot, then mess around with these Y and Z coordinates. X would be like side to side, so you don't need to worry about that. Now, ignore this other stuff for now. What we're also going to look at is the cord and span. So these don't actually matter at all, but they are dependent on what coefficients of lift and drag you use. Then we're going to get into that pretty soon. So what I'd recommend is if you can, set it to the correct dimensions of your wing. But like I said, this doesn't really matter too much. I'm just going to put what I have for my G37 right now since it's the same wing. Before we get to the complicated stuff, I want to show you that there's a multiplier here for lift, which is, you know, lift is downforce. Lift is negative downforce. So if you want it to have less downforce, you can decrease this number. If you want more, you can increase this number. And then there's the same thing. We have a coefficient for drag, so you can multiply the drag. And then right here, we have the starting angle of what you want the wing to be. So we're going to get into this LUT file in a bit, and you're going to plot different values for different angles of the wing. And then right here, you're going to set what angle you want it to start at. So I'm probably just going to put it at 5 degrees for now. So now each arrow element has a file for coefficients of drag and lift. If you look at the front bumper here, for example, here's the lift file. Different coefficients at different angles that the front bumper can experience, which the angles change when the car leans forward and leans back. So it's all dynamic. And then same thing for drag here. There's different drag values from different angles. So now what we need to do is add a lift and drag profile for the new wing, which I already created here. If you want, you can just copy and paste the lift and drag from another part and just change the values. But I have these files already done from the G37. So if we open these files, you can see that I have coefficients of lift and drag at various different angles between negative degrees and 16 degrees of angle of attack. This is because you have to be able to input all the different angles that your car might experience. So even if you're racing at 10 degrees, 
your car might nosedive such that it hits 16 degrees in total from your front suspension compressing and the car leaning forward. So you need to account for a wider range of angles than what you're going to be setting your wing to. Now the way that I got these values was by inputting all the data from APR's website, which I'll show here. They have lift and drag values for angles between 0 and 16 degrees. So I inputted them to Google Sheets and then used some online calculator to find what the coefficient of lift should have been, which is this column, and same thing for drag, based off of their lift and drag values. You have to convert to coefficients because Assetto Corsa is going to formulate lift and drag based off of the coefficients according to also the dimensions that you gave for your wing. Now if the constants that you put in whatever calculator you use are not completely accurate, it doesn't matter as long as what you have is a correct pattern of coefficient of lift. So as long as the ratio is okay from one angle to the next. That's all that matters because we're going to be able to correct it later to account for the proper force. Just type in on Google coefficient of lift calculator or coefficient of drag calculator. Now go ahead and create your LUT file here. You have to call it exactly how I have it right here with this section right here where I have APR being your wing name that you had in the arrow file. So now what you're going to do is put all the angles on the left with the solid line here. I don't know what you call this. And then the coefficient on the right. So I'm doing the uncorrected values here so we can walk through this together. You can see how everything lines up. But at, at some point you're going to have to kind of estimate what the values are going to be if you don't have them. Like at negative two, I just put a much smaller coefficient of lift. And then beyond that, I put zero. If you don't add anything outside these bounds, if I didn't add negative two here, anything from zero degrees and lower, it would be 0.518 coefficient of lift, which is not good. And then do the same thing for the coefficient of drag file. Now we go back to the arrow tab. What we have to do is put the right file name here for drag and lift. So this one should be wing underscore APR. The lift should be the same thing, wing underscore APR. That way it knows what file to look for these lift and drag values. So now what we're going to do is go into the simulator and test drive it to 120 miles an hour to make sure we get this coefficient of lift right here. It needs to say 166.15 pounds, but it's going to show us in kilograms, so we need to convert real quick. Pounds to kilograms, 166.15. So what we need to see is 75.36 kilograms. So in order to test out the individual element wing that we just added, what we want to do is set the coefficient of drag and lift multipliers to all the other wing elements to zero. So that's what I'm doing here. And now we're going to test it out. Turn on your wings and essential widgets. And then just go. Drive the car all the way up to 120 miles an hour. And it looks like we're actually already making that 75 kilograms of downforce that we need to equal the 166 pounds at 120 miles an hour. So we're not going to change anything. But if you need to scale that number to the right value for whatever downforce you need, just change the CL gain and then change the CD gain by the same amount. Now for the front splitter, our goal here is going to be to design a splitter that equals out the downforce from our wing. We're going to want a 57% front weight aero distribution because the car is 59% front weighted and we want about 2% back from that. So I have this coefficient gradient right here which is pretty standard for like any bumper to splitter combo. So we're going to start with this gradient here and then scale it to wherever we need in order to get that balance. Now we want to turn back on all the CL and CD gains for the elements. Except remember, the wing body does not have a CL gain, it only has CD. So leave CL gain at zero. And then back to testing the car at 120 miles an hour. It made more downforce, so the splitter is working, but we're only 7% front, so we need a lot more. So this is just going to be trial and error. You're going to be changing this coefficient until you're able to get that right balance. And only change the CL gain on the wing in the front, not the CD gain. So I already know that I need it to be 4.5 because I did the calculations and testing. And you can see now that we're at like 57% front, which is good. That's exactly what we want, and we're making a lot more downforce. Now one more thing, like I told you guys, the wing zero is the body which kind of handles the main drag of your car. We're going to set the coefficient of drag gain to a little bit lower, like 0 0.95, because splitters actually decrease drag by reducing the amount of air that goes under your car. But we are getting extra drag now from the wing in the back, so we are netting more overall drag. So our arrow's all good, but wait, we just added a wing and splitter to our car. Doesn't that make it heavier? So into the car file, let's say we added about 15 kilograms for the average weight of a splitter and wing, so I'll change this to 1255. 
and the wing probably weighs more than the splitter. So now into the suspension file, we're going to bring the center of gravity back just a little bit. We'll call it 0.588. What I want to do now is actually test this car for what we've done so far with the power and aero mods compared to the base GT86 and see how much faster it is. So here's the GT86 tune going around the track. I don't know if you can tell, but it's actually bottoming out really hard with its cut springs and all the downforce that it now makes. But the stock GT86 ran around Willow Springs International Raceway with a time of 136.556. And then the tuned 86 got 132.562. So that's about a four second difference between a supercharger, cut springs, aero, and everything else we did, little changes in the introduction video. But what we really need for this car now is suspension, so that's probably what we're going to do next.